All right, guys, welcome back to the hillside. We are obviously indoors today because it is December and there's not a lot going on out in the garden. However, this time of year is a perfect time to start planting some winter sown seeds or starting to cold stratify some of your seeds that will be going out in the spring but need that cold treatment in the winter and fall time to break that dormancy and be ready for spring. So today, what we have, if I can get some of these here, these are so tiny. These are wild blueberries, okay? So not the ones you get from the store, uh, typically the bigger, larger blueberry size. These are the wild or low bush type blueberries. Uh, you can wild collect them. These are some frozen ones I have here. Um, I'm going to show you how to take the seeds out of them and two methods I'm going to try out to see which one works best, whether it be cold stratifying or using the uh, toilet paper or paper towel method um, just to see which one works better. So let me go ahead and zoom in close and show you what I'm doing with these two methods right here. Okay, so for this first method right here, this is the paper towel method. And as you look here, I've kind of broken apart the, the actual fruit themselves. And you see these little tiny dots. I'm not sure it's going to focus. These seeds are really, really, really tiny. I'm not sure if I'll zoom in at all on you. There we go. So these are the wild blueberry seeds, uh, low bush blueberry, whichever one you want to kind of call them there. But see how small the seeds are? Very, very tiny. Uh, you don't want these to dry out. You don't want to keep them moist. So what we're going to do is... All right, it's going to go into that little uh, Ziploc bag right there. If we fold it over in half, half again, do this with one hand, just like that. It's going to go inside the bag. Keep it moist, damp, but not soaking wet. Seal it up and leave it in the top of the refrigerator or some place that's going to be relatively warm, out of direct sunlight. And keep checking on it, probably two to three weeks before you get the first sprout, maybe sooner, depending on the uh, conditions in your home. But there you go. It's one method you can use. Like I said, you don't want these to dry out. Uh, I think they're really uh, sensitive to being dried out and desiccating, making them uh, more and more difficult to germinate if they'll germinate at all. So the second method, which is one of my new favorite toys, uh, and I say that jokingly because it's not a toy, but a winter sewing. Okay, if you've never seen this, there's tons of videos. I've shown some videos on this. Check it out. This is just an old plastic uh, juice bottle. I think it had some V8 juice or something, tomato juice or something in it. Uh, so I've cut it off. Mostly leaving a little bit like this so it can kind of hinge open and close. And of course we have the fruit right here. And they're starting to melt so they're kind of, you know, juice is kind of starting to come out of them. Not a big deal. So what I like to think of, you know, in nature, um, whether it be August or September, or wherever your climate, these are, these are ripe. They're going to fall off the plant. They're going to get eaten by a bird. They're going to be dropped someplace and deposited in the fall. Uh, leaves are going to fall, rain, snow, wind is going to happen, and then in the spring they're going to grow. No one goes around planting wild blueberries, you know, in six cell trays and hoping for the best. That's not how nature works. So by winter sowing, you're basically trying to recreate the natural process. So what I have here is about two-thirds to three-quarters of peat moss with a little bit of homemade compost that's been uh, well broken down in here. Pre-moistened, very big uh, big note there. Make sure it's pre-moistened the soil. And what I'm gonna do, because you know you could squeeze these out and try to get some, you know, run them through some water, filter them out, uh, just extract these little tiny seeds, but I think that's a little bit impractical because you know it's just not gonna happen. So all I'm gonna do is, if I can work that, just squeeze these, juice these up until it's just mush, and that just goes in. I'm gonna do that with all of these. Make sure you kind of space them out as I'm squishing these out between my fingers, I'm trying to run them out just all over the container, evenly dispersed. So over on this side here, and you can feel when you're squeezing the berries, little grainy bits in there, kind of between your fingers. So there you go, they're in there, and you look at the fingers here, definitely purple, but you can see those little seeds, little flecks on my fingers right there, and that's all right. So what I'm going to do here is go ahead and pause for a second, clean my fingers off, try to get these uh, berries more evenly distributed, get my fingers uh, washed off, and I'll show you what the next step is in winter sowing of these wild blueberries. Okay, so I hope that's coming through a little better. You can see the darker blueberries kind of on contrast with the uh, existing soil, but if you look really closely, little brown specks, those are the actual seeds. I've done the best I could to kind of space them out evenly across the surface of the uh, the potting soil and uh, compost and peat moss mixture. So on top of this, I'm just going to add a very light layer on top because these are such small seeds. You don't really want to bury these deeply, just enough to cover them up. And then after that, what we're going to do, take this over here. 
you're actually going to put the lid back on. And whatever tape you use, whether it be clear packing tape or duct tape or you can use scotch tape, but you need to put several layers and it may not hold, but that's all right. So what you're going to do then is just keep it all wrapped up. I'm going to take it outside and put it on the side of the house. It gets a little bit of sunlight, but it's not going to be baking in the sun because you don't want to roast your seeds, especially when the spring comes around. And it does start to get a bit warmer. This will make a extremely hot greenhouse, which is why you leave the top on top up here because you can vent that out. But, you know, as the season uh, warms up in the springtime, you start noticing growth. Then you can treat it just as a regular container. You can cut the rest of this, uh, this side off right here and use this as a, uh, just a, a standard planter. Keep it on your windowsill or, you know, a secluded place that's going to be just treated as a, um, as a, um, this growing starter pot, if you will. Uh, that being said, when the springtime does come around, you start to actually have to water this again. You're going to need to poke a couple holes in the bottom of your container to get some excess moisture to come out. I don't like to do that right now because it is still winter time and I'm not going to add any moisture to it. So I like to retain this kind of a closed environment right there to keep the temperature stable and the moisture level stable, etc. Because, like I said, if it does warm up a little bit uh, through transpiration and things like this, the water may evaporate uh, very slowly, which could desiccate and or dry out your seeds, rendering them inviable and unable to uh, to grow. So I know you guys probably are not happy right now with me stopping right now, but this is a, you know, in real time type video. So I'm going to go ahead and put these uh, seeds outside for a seal this container up. I'm going to take my uh, sandwich bag, put the, a little bit of water on those seeds, get those in a nice warm area. And I will provide an update on both. Uh, if and when they both start to germinate, which I imagine the indoor version will probably germinate much, much quicker than the outdoor winter sown version. But it's also kind of a comparison to see which of the seedlings have more vitality, which ones have more vigor, which ones grow better. So there you go, guys. This is just a quick hillside update. Just trying to start some wild blueberry seeds, a new winter project to kind of keep you sane. If you've never checked out any of my other old videos about winter sowing, do check those out now. Uh, hopefully you guys are staying warm and finding projects to keep you busy in the winter time because you know the long cold winter ahead of us and it's a long time till spring uh comes back we're able to get back out in the yard and do some stuff outdoors i know what it's like being cabin fever stuck inside so uh winter time cold stratify some seeds try starting some seeds outside winter sowing um you know emulate uh, what nature would do you know plant the seeds in the fall and they're going to grow in the spring all by themselves they know what to do you can just kind of help uh create that um that environment on your own. All right, so there you go, guys. That's winter sowing wild blueberries right here. All right, so go out there and try it out. If you've never tried it out before, go ahead and give it a shot. You never know, it might be successful. Hopefully uh, you guys find a way to keep yourself uh, sane and happy this uh, winter time when you can't be outside in the garden. Hopefully that um, you know, you're willing to try something different, kind of expand your gardening skills. And you never know, you might find something that you like to do. A little bit better you might find that winter sowing actually is more productive and easier for you because you don't have to worry about putting the seeds inside uh, trying to put them under lights or you know etc etc um, keeping them watered manicure you know growing lights etc etc you can keep these guys outside and nature do what it's going to do without your help like it's been doing all along so from the hillside guys check me out next time with my next video i'll put some updates about the blueberry progress other things i have going on inside out in the yard some things are miraculously still growing in december uh, you guys will see a video on that coming up pretty soon so i uh, hope you're staying warm and i'll see you next time here on the hillside bye bye